Welcome family and friends, and thank you for joining me on today's foundation sessions about obedience. The last couple of weeks, we spoke about prayer, God's word, and the Holy Spirit. And I hope that all these sessions has been a blessing to you and brought so much understanding and grace to your life that how you read the word of God, how you understand God's word, the rhema and the logos, but even your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You know, there's been so little teachings on the Holy Spirit. And you know, God has just been blessing us on understanding and getting to know the Holy Spirit, the fellowship of the, of the Holy Spirit and His importance. We're gonna talk about obedience today and you might be wondering, so how does obedience fit in a session such as this uh, when you look at what we've already done? The Holy Spirit, the Word of God and prayer. We can have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, but unless we begin to open ourselves and understand and become obedient to His guidance, His Lordship, His comfort and instructions, it means nothing that we have fellowship with Him. When we read the Word of God and we begin to understand the Rhema and the Logos, unless we act upon it in obedience, the Word of God has no meaning. It would just become knowledge. It would just become something I know. When we begin to move in prayer and begin to build a prayer life in seeking God and just praying for family, praying for our nation, then unless we begin to act and pray and walk in obedience, prayer means nothing. So obedience and today's session would help us understand what obedience is all about and what's the significance about obedience. Um, I believe many of you and even myself that so many times I would say, or you probably would say, you know, you know, I'm so glad that I was obedient to this person because I got the job. I was so, uh, I'm so glad that I was obedient to what God said to me because I got a promotion. Um, I'm so glad that um, I was obedient uh, because my family got healed. Some people would say, you know what, if I would have just listened, if I would have just been obedient to, to what God has said, I would not be in this position. Or if I would have listened to my mom, um, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would not be in this position. Or, you know, even at school, um, if your teacher gives, gives you an instruction and he or she says, you know, just be obedient by doing so and so and so, and you don't listen to it or you neglect it and you've got this, this, this sense of guilt that if I would have just listened, I would not have been in, 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 in this position. I want to share with you a piece of scripture out of John 15 verse 10. And this is a conversation that Jesus has with his disciples that John 15 speaks about the vine and the branches. And just quickly that in this, in this passage, in this chapter, Jesus speaks to them about God the Father being the gardener, Jesus being the, the, the vine, and the disciples being the branches. And that Jesus says to them that the branches connected to the vine, that they would bear fruit. And because they bear fruit, the father who is the gardener, he prunes the branches that they would bear much fruit. But then Jesus mentions something so beautiful to them in verses 9 and 10. And it reads as follows. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. It's an interesting illustration that Jesus uses about obedience, obeying the commandments, and He speaks about love, obedience and love. That if you, if you abide in me my, and you keep my commandments, there's, an, as a, there's a measure of love inside of you. If you look at the life of Jesus, that Jesus lived in full obedience to the Father's will. And that's key number one when we talk about obedience. Jesus lived in full obedience to the Father's will. Why do I say that? Jesus said to his disciples that I only do what I see my Father does. I only do what my Father does. So if my Father is healing, I'm healing. If my Father is providing bread or a meal, I provide 
a bread or a meal. So Jesus lived in obedience to what the Father did and he would act on it. The second one is the Great Commission. Matthew 28 verse 18 to 20, Jesus speaks to his disciples about the Great Commission. And the Great Commission is basically them going into the world, teaching, preaching, baptizing, making disciples of all nations. And this commandment is just not for the disciples, but it's for you and for me. When you look at the, at the Great Commission, it speaks about obeying, teaching them to obey. And I'm coming back to what I said earlier that I can talk about something, but unless I obey, it means nothing. When you look at the kingdom, when Jesus spoke, when you look at the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus spoke to them and you would always see that Jesus speaks about the kingdom. The kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God is like. Jesus mentioned on one occasion, he spoke about the church. And this is when Jesus asked him, so who do you say I am? And they were saying, yes, yeah, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're the prophet, some say you're this or that. But Jesus said, who do you as the disciples say I am? Peter responds and said that you are the Christ, the son of God. Jesus said that you are correct. There's no way that you would receive such revelation and insight. It must have been the Father. And then Jesus said that on this rock, I will build my church. It's the only and the only time that Jesus speaks about the church. But Jesus is always teaching about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. And what we have done is over the many, over so many years is that we've been building the church, we've been building the church at the expense of the kingdom. Instead of advancing the kingdom, we've been building our churches. Well, there's nothing wrong with growing the church in the sense of reaching out to other believers, but we've neglected the kingdom that Jesus was trying to introduce to us. The fourth thing is about obedience is Peter's reinstatement in John 21, verse 15 to 17. If you can recall that on one, on one occasion, Peter denied Jesus three times and Jesus said that, well, you will deny me when the rooster crows three times, you will deny me. So Jesus has a moment with Peter and he reinstates him by saying, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes, Lord. And then Jesus says this beautifully, he says that, feed my sheep. And then a second time, Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? And then Peter says, yes, Lord, you know, I love you. And then Jesus says, feed my sheep. A third time, Jesus says, Peter, Simon Peter, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know. The Bible says that he was indignant about this. He says, Lord, you know. And then Jesus said, feed my sheep. This is my point. Peter says that he loves Jesus. God, Jesus asks him the question and he says, Lord, you know that I love you. And then he gives him the instruction, feed my sheep. What is this? Peter, you say that you love me. Then show me that you love me by obeying what I'm telling you. Feed my sheep. There's a, there's a relation between love and obedience. That if I say I love you, I need to show it by what I'm doing, by being obedient. Jesus used a story by using this analogy in the Gospels about two sons. When the father asked the one son, would he do something? And he said, yes, but he never did. But the second son he asked and he said, would he do it? And the son said, no. But later on, he went to do it. So who was the greatest between the two? It was the son that said he doesn't want to or he would not do it, but later on, he did it. Now you're probably asking me, Wally, so what's the point in terms of what you're trying to tell or trying to teach about obedience? The difference between success and failure, the difference between moving forward and staying where you are is obedience. If you look at a simple test, for example, the teacher says to you, um, we're going to write a test tomorrow. We've got a mathematics test coming up and you need to study chapter one, two, and three. You can go home, sleep on it, and come back tomorrow and write the test and expect to get good results. Well, you might be writing out of memory what you've studied before or what you've done weeks ago, but unless you go home on the instruction of what your teacher said, study chapter one, two, and three, 
Unless you go back and you study those three chapters, there's no way that you'll get 100%. When you come back, you write the test and you suddenly fail, but you ask the question, so how come did I fail? Well, you were not obedient to the instructions of the teacher by studying those three chapters. Here's my point once again. There's no way that I can say I love you unless I'm obedient. And there's no way that I can say I love you or there's no way that I can say I'm obedient just walking in obedience because if I'm obedient, I love you. When I love you, I'll obey. And this is our simple relationship with Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that there's such, a, there's such an emphasis about in the Bible about obedience to Jesus Christ in our journey as believers with Christ. I want to share with you something quickly. In Deuteronomy 28, on this entire chapter, God speaks to the Israelites about obedience and disobedience. And He brings the difference about being blessed and, and, you know, and the curse. And, and the difference between is that if you obey the voice of my commandments or if you hearken to the commandments, you'll be blessed. You know, your family, your generations, what you have. But if you disobey, there'll come a curse on your life. Well, this might be straight up truth in your face, but just think about it when we talk about obedience and disobedience. The difference between success and failure lies in obedience. The difference in moving forward and backwards lies in obedience. If you look at your son, if you're, if you're a parent, how many times do you expect your children to be obedient in what you tell them and what you want to get from them? You expect obedience. And that is what the Father seeks from you and me. When we look at Isaac, Abram, and Jacob, and we look at all of these men, they lived in obedience to what Jesus, to what God taught and modeled in their life. And they became simply obedient by just following the instructions and living a life of obedience. The same when we talk about obedience, we look at humility. There's no way that I can be obedient and not walk in humility because if I'm a prideful man and I try to exalt myself, there's no way that I'll walk in obedience to someone. I'll always live a life of rebellion. And obedience allows us to walk in humility as one of the principles when it comes to being obedient. Now, coming back to about the kingdom of God is that when Jesus spoke about the kingdom, he taught and he, he taught and modeled on the kingdom of God and he talked about obedience, walking and advancing the kingdom of God, but it comes down to obedience. This couple of times, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly challenged about obedience, obedience, obedience. And I've had a hard time in my own personal journey with Jesus and the family and friends that surround me walking in obedience. Many times we try to be selective when we, when we engage in relationships. You know, selective, I mean that I'll be obedient based on I like you. I'll be obedient based on who you are. Many of us are in a job environment or in a work environment where we don't agree with our leaders. We don't see eye to eye with our bosses. And we tend to become rebellious even, even to the expense that we know it's the right thing, but I'll prove a point by not doing it. I'm in rebellion to it. Here's the upside to it that we are commanded, even though we disagree, even though we disagree with our leaders, with the authorities, we are still called to honor them and walk in, in humility before them. And we still are called to listen to, to, to what they say and walk in obedience, even though we don't agree with, with so many things. I want to close off with this, with this statement. Love and obedience are synonymous and we can never separate the two. Love and obedience are synonymous. They go hand in hand. If I say I love you, and I've mentioned this so many times before, that if I say I love you, I'll show it through my obedience. There's no way that I can say I love you and not walk in obedience to it. So I hope that this session in terms of obedience, you know, would, would, would shed so much light on your own personal life. You know, take a couple of moments and just think about obedience. You know, for many of you that are married, many of you that are single, are you living a life of obedience? Obedience to so many things that you've set yourself up that um, I've got a goal that I want to achieve this year. I've got a goal for my life for the next few years. Um, God has given me instructions so many years ago or so many months ago. Am I still walking faithfully in what He said? Or have I put it aside and I've wandered off doing my own thing? Think about it. 
Does God find you faithful with what is entrusted to you? When we look at when Jesus, um, when, when Jesus spoke about the parables of the talents, he mentioned something very beautiful when he said, you know, to each was given something. There was some of the two of them that was obedient in multiplying, but there was one that was unfaithful that just made, just hid it. And those that was obedient, they were faithful, they were rewarded with much. I hope that this session, it might be truthful in your face, but think about it. Read up Deuteronomy 28 about, you know, the obedience. The idea is not to, um, it's not to, 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 to speak about money and wealth. What I'm trying to share with you is the key in helping you understand obedience. Walking in obedience, living a life of obedience, acting in obedience. I mean, if you've not been walking in obedience, there's nothing wrong. Just come to a place and say, Father, I repent. Forgive me for, you know, being uh, disobedient. You know, for hitting against the war, fighting against what you want to tell, tell me, uh, fighting against the promptings of the Holy Spirit. You know, repent and do right by God by just surrendering and living a life of obedience. Father, we just thank you right now for the session of obedience. It is something that challenges us. It's something that motivates us, but it's something that we don't want to hear because we've got so much pain. We've got so much heartache. We don't agree with many of our leaders, our family and friends. Help us to live a life of obedience, not in the way I see it or I value it, but in the way you value and the way you see it based on what your word teaches and instructs us, instructs us to do. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Um, and thank you for journeying with us for the last couple of weeks. And I hope that you will continue to journey with us for the next couple of weeks on what we're about to teach you. My name is Wally and I'm from Ecclesia. Thank you so much and good day.